So I've just watched about 10 AI web scraping videos and they're all the same. And in my opinion, none of them are particularly helpful nor useful and show you a lot of bad practices for web scraping. And if I have to see anyone say something along the lines of you can scrape any site, it's just not true because this is just not how web scraping works. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna pick one specific example um, and just show you how you should scrape that site and then explain to you why I think AI does actually fit and then I'm going to do a whole video on this coming out later so subscribe to my channel to see if you want to know actually how to use AI in web scraping. But I'm going to, this time I'm going to show you why you don't need to. Regardless of what you are using to scrape data there's one thing we're all going to agree on and that's that you need a large pool of IPs otherwise you're just going to get stopped dead in your tracks right away and for this I use Proxy Scrape who are sponsoring this video. There's 10 million plus proxies in the pool to use or with unlimited concurrent sessions from countries all over the globe enabling you to scrape quickly and efficiently. I use a variety of different proxies but if you're just starting out with proxies I'd recommend starting with residential ones. They're like the best option really for being any bot protection and are going to give you the highest success rate but to be fair I've been doing quite a lot of work with mobile proxies too which are a bit more niche a bit more specific but also work particularly well in the right use case and either way it's just one line of code to add to your projects and away you go proxy scrape will handle the rest for you from there and any traffic you purchase is yours to keep whenever as it doesn't ever expire which is really cool so if this all sounds good to you go ahead and check out proxy scrape at the link in the description below now let's get back to the video I'm looking at this site here. I've got 84 responses. That's kind of irrelevant, really. The last thing you want to do to scrape this site is load up a browser and start trying to pull this information out. A, browsers, unless you are at the cutting edge, are very easy to spot and block. So any site that is difficult to scrape, it's probably going to find out that it's not going to work anyway. So you've still got that main problem. The second is, you know, there's not all the information here. There's only parts of the information. You'd have to click into each one, which again, you can do, but you don't want to be using a browser for this. So what I'm going to show you is you go to inspect, you're on the page that you want, go to network, scroll down, click on a button, make change the page or something and look for this. This is a GraphQL request to the website's API. And this has all of the information for everything on it. So I'm going to go response, we'll expand this out and we'll go profiles. 50 we got this time, 50 on this page, makes sense. And here we go. So here we have everything. It's got the name, all this stuff, even data that you probably don't even need or want. It's all here. And you don't need AI to summarize this for you. They've already done that. This is the summary. So why would you need to summarize in a summary already? It doesn't make sense to me. But what you can do is we can just go ahead and in a lot of cases, right, you can just copy the, requ <laughs> copy the request and stick it into curl and it will work. In some cases, you know, that won't work. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy the whole thing as curl. And we're going to come to this website called curl converter. We'll paste this in and you can see we have this information. This is just Python code and hardly any of it. Some headers and a JSON data query. I want to copy this and I'm going to open up a folder with a project in it. I'm just going to create a main.py file. If you want to see what I've got installed for pip, it's just this. This is curl CFFI, which basically is a wrapper around requests that sends a more browser-like TLS fingerprint. It's useful in a lot of cases. A lot of times you don't need it, but if you're using requests anyway, you might as well just use this and then rich for um, showing it more in my terminal. So I'm going to open up this main file, paste this in. I'm going to make a couple of changes at the top. Instead of this, we're going to do from curl CFFI import requests. Now, if you're just using standard requests, you don't even need to change this. And we're going to do uh, not that, we'll do from rich import print, like so. And then all I'm going to do is just come down to the bottom. We don't need this, I'm not interested. I'm just going to do print response dot JSON. Clear this up and run it. There we go. That's it. That request here that the site made, that this website made to get the JSON data to make sure that this all has the right information in it, we just made with Python over here and get all, got all the same information. So let's look at this one. Let's find a full, uh, full one. Okay. There we go. ID, vendor ID, account number, status, name, description. Like I said, here's the summary of the description. You don't need to create a summary. There's already one there. Um, 
all this information. There's another description, categories. Down here somewhere will be the price range. They don't give a price, obviously, but you do get this, which we saw on the website here. And I've made all this in one request. And in this instance, what we can also do is we can have a look at the actual request that we're making. And we can see that there's a page number and a limit and also a city and a state like it would be for any API. I'm just going to change this. We'll just change it to, I don't know, 60. And we should have a totals at the bottom says so 84 profiles. I know that's how many there are in total. I don't know how many we're actually getting. We'd want to expand on that. But if we want to see the individual bits of information, you know, just go uh, for item in response dot JSON. And I'll just interrogate the JSON over here. Data search profiles data search profiles and we'll just print item and we'll just ask for the name so now we'll run it and we should just get the names printed out there we go let me do so this is the information this is all of it um, that's how you get it and that's the hardest part of web scraping the hardest part of web scraping is getting the data getting it consistently and getting it at scale AI is not really going to help you with those. I mean, it will help you passing some information, but if you still have to write some CSS selectors to get at the inform information, you still have that brittle problem as it is. So there's no point really. There are use cases for AI and web scraping, absolutely, but I find, but I think they are quite niche and very specific. And if you're at that point, then this video is not helping you anyway you know you're at that point and you're like, well, I use AI for this in my scraping projects at an industrial scale. And I will say, cool, good for you, that's great. But for what a lot of these people are showing you and showing you things with Crawl AI, Crawl for AI, which is a great um, open source project, by the way, I've looked through the source code, it looks really cool. There's some cool things going on there, but it's not gonna help you with the hardest part. Now, you can say, well, I don't have, you know, you haven't done, you haven't exported this all neatly to CSV or anything. Well, okay, I haven't, but there's a reason for that. A, because I'm not really interested in this information, but B, because now I've got the information, whatever you want to do with it is entirely up to you. You could quite easily import pandas, flatten the whole JSON out, and just create a massive CSV file with everything that you need, or just chop out the bits that you want. So if you just want the name and the description, just get the name and the description and export it. That is not the difficult part in web scraping. That is not the challenging part. And for most cases with things like this, you don't need an LLM to do this for you. It's totally overkill. So I do have a video coming out shortly where I'll explain to you where I do think and show you where I do think AI belongs in web scraping because it does have a place. But for doing things like this, where I'm seeing all these people doing these kind of like demos, it's just not worth it. So yeah, go ahead and uh, I'll leave a link to a video of how to do more web scraping where you can get the data and much easier to send to your LLMs to your agents if you want to, or at least you'll understand and you can make an educated decision.